The first thing you want to do is press Command R to build and run your program. Let's launch, launch the iPad simulator, so it'll take a little while to happen. As you can see, I can see a uh, hello world upside down. It hasn't rotated terribly well. There we go. Uh, I forgot eventually. Um, you see hello world in big text, plus uh, nodes two in the bottom right corner, plus 36.4 FPS for frames per second. If you tap on the screen, you will see spinning boxes appear and disappear like this. And the hello world sort of fades in and out. Obviously, we don't want any of this in our own game. This is just there to give you an idea of what Sprite Kit can do. We want to wipe out all this default content. This takes a few steps to do. So you have to repeat these steps with many projects in the future. So first, I'm going to go into GameScene.Swift. That is the, uh, the main game that we're showing right now on the screen. It's all this code in here. It can nearly all go. I get rid of this import gameplay kit. We asked not to have that yet. Get it anyway. <clears throat> we're going to get rid of this label and spinning node. Uh, did move two. This can all go. I'll keep the, the method itself, but not, not the uh, contents of it. I'll get rid of touch down, touch move, touch up, began, moved, ended, cancelled. That could all go, leaving just that handful of lines of code afterwards. We're going to keep update, and we're going to keep did move to view. Otherwise, everything else is going to go away. In fact, even update can go away. Yeah, get rid of all this code. We're reading on that stuff. We also have uh, gamescene.sks over here, which is a, a sprite kit file that contains our layouts for the game. This is like Interface Builder for Sprite Kit. And so where you can see this big hello world thing comes from. Uh, we don't want that at all. Uh, we can get rid of that whole thing. So I'll go ahead and select hello world and delete it entirely. It's just useless. This is our, our canvas, by the way. There's big space over here. Uh, this is where we can draw into. Uh, as you'll see, it's nice and big. It is about the size of an iPhone screen. But we can change that. Over here in the inspectors, uh, you'll see lots of options here uh, for this view inside the inspector window. You'll see it has a custom size of 750 by 1334, has an anchor point, has gravity, and similar. We can modify all these right here in the scene editor. Now, we're going to make a few changes here to make our, our game easier to work with. Uh, one of the first ones we're going to change is this anchor point value, anchor X and Y of 0.5. Uh, this value determines what coordinates Sprite Kit uses to position its children. And it's set to x 0.5, y 0.5 by default. And it means position me based on my center, which is different to the way UI Kit works. Now, UI Kit positions things based on their top left corner. But these 0.5 default values means position based on the center. So if I place a, a sprite in there, a, a game object in there at 0, 0, it'll actually be placed smack in the middle of the view not uh, as a UI kit would have it up in the top left corner. So you can see zero and zero is right in the middle, thanks to this anchor point being uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We're gonna change this to be naught for X and naught for Y. And you'll see it change, but it's changed in a slightly unusual way. Uh, and this will confuse you a little bit because even with naught, naught, it's still not quite like UI kit. You can see naught X has made the left edge be zero, which is great. But not y made the bottom edge be y0. So 0 starts at the bottom edge here, whereas in UI kit, it starts at the top. So in sprite kit land, uh, anchor point x0, y0 means the bottom left corner, not the top left corner. I'd also like to change the size of the scene, which is just above the anchor point. This is set to uh, 750 by 1334 right now. We're going to change that to be uh, 1024 wide and 768 high, which matches the general iPad screen resolution. The last change I'd like you to make is to look for this file here, actions.sks, which lets you create scaling and fading and such uh, in a visual editor. This kind of thing I find is best done in code, so I nearly always delete that file. So please select actions.sks now, then press your backspace button and choose move to trash. We don't need that here. All these changes have effectively cleaned the project, putting it back into a vanilla state we can build on. And with all that template stuff deleted, I'd like to import the real assets for this project. These are on GitHub. You can grab them now from github.com slash two straws slash hacking with Swift. I have them ready on my desktop over in Finder. So I'll look in hacking with Swift. 
choose Project 11 Files, then Content, and here all the graphics we'll be using for this game. You can see there's uh, background at 2x, there is a uh, ball blue at 2x and so forth, there's cyan, green, gray, purple, red, and more. Uh, we'll be using all those in this game. So in our asset catalog in Xcode, I'm gonna just select all these pictures and drag them into here. Boom, like that. So we can start using them in our game. To begin with, we're gonna ditch the plain background we had and replace it with a picture instead. That's gonna be the background JPEG picture. If you wanna place an image in your game, the class to use is called SK Sprite Node. And it can load any picture from your app bundle, just like UI image. To place a background picture, we need to load the file called background.jpg, then position it in the center of the screen. Remember, unlike UI Kit, Sprite Kit positions things based on their center, i.e. the point zero, 00 refers to horizontal and vertical center of a node. And also unlike UI Kit, Sprite Kit's Y axis starts at the bottom edge, so a higher Y number places a node higher on the screen. So, to place the background image in the center of a landscape iPad, we need to place it at position X512, Y384. So let's do that now. Over in gamescene.swift, we have did move to view. I'm going to say let background equals SK sprite node. I'll use the image named initializer and write background. Let's get this window on the right here out of the way. Then we'll say uh, background dot position is CG point. X is 512. Y is 384. And then add child background. So create the sprite node, place it in the middle of the screen, and add it to our game scene. I'll press Command R now to build that. We should see it on the background looking nice. Boom, great. Just to make sure, I'll try running that in the larger iPad. That is the 12.9-inch uh, third-generation iPad Pro. This is a much bigger, much more powerful device, but of course it's running on the same Mac simulator, so it'll actually run much, much slower. Uh, so if you have this as a real device, please, please, please use a real device rather than the simulator, because it's just viciously slow. And there we go, in the iPad Pro, it still looks great, still fits it nicely on the screen, which is fantastic. Anyway, I'm gonna quit the iPad Pro, we don't want that anymore, it is just far too slow. I mean, they're all slow, that's particularly slow. We're going to do two more things, both of which are only needed for this background. First, we're gonna give it a blend mode dot replace. Blend modes determine how a node is drawn, and Sprite gives us many options. The replace option means just draw it, ignoring any alpha values, any transparency, which makes it very fast for things without gaps like our background picture. We're also going to give the background a Z position of minus one, which in our game means draw this behind everything else. So after the position, we're going to say background dot blend mode is dot replace and background dot Z position or Z position is minus one. So draw ignoring alpha, a transparencies because our thing is completely solid, there's no alpha at all, and place it behind everything else. I'll run it again. And this should look identical, look exactly the same. Oh, it's still an iPad Pro back accident. I apologize for that. I'll switch back to the iPad uh, sixth generation. It's a bad idea. Trust me, they're, they're all slow. 12.9 is really, really slow. You don't want that at all. Anyway, I'll kill that thing and run it in the iPad sixth generation, hopefully correctly this time. And it'll, it'll look the same. Nothing will have changed here. Uh, the blend mode draws faster, though. This will work slightly faster in the simulator and, of course, faster in all devices as well. Let's do something a bit more interesting. I'll go ahead and add a method below did move to view called touches began. And this is called when the user's touch the screen somehow. So we're gonna say uh, guard let touch equals touches dot first else return. So attempt to read the first touch that came in. They may have used two or three fingers at the same time. That'll make sure we get one touch at the very least. Next we want to know where that touch happened on the screen. So we're going to say let location equals touch dot location in self. And that will say, find where this touch was in the whole of my game scene. When we know that position, we'll create a new sprite node, a box, 
at that location so we can see where the touch happened on the screen. So we'll say let box equals sk sprite node with the color being dot red and the size being CG size, width 64, height 64. So a square. We'll position that thing using box.position at the location of a touch. And finally, add that child to our game scene. So we'll do add child box. So again, find the first touch from many potentially, figure out where it was on our screen, create a new box that's 64 by 64, position it at that touch location, and add that to the screen. So we press Command R now, we should see that box on the screen when we tap. So I'll tap here, boom, a box, another one, another one, there we go. So it's adding boxes wherever we tap on the screen. And you'll see uh, this nodes number down here is going up, up and up and up. It's now 12, 13, 14, and so forth. So it's adding uh, each one a new node down here. You'll also see the FPS fluctuates slightly. It's now uh, 58 FPS, uh, which is fine. As long as it's around 60, we'll be happy. But again, the simulator really can't handle very much here, so please use a real device. Okay, I admit that's still quite boring, so let's make it even more interesting. Are you ready to see quite how powerful Sprite Kit is? Just before we set the position of our box here, I'm gonna add some physics. I'm gonna say box.physics body is an SK physics body, and we're gonna use the rectangle of initializer. This one's a size, so I'll just do CG size, and again, we'll use width 64, height 64, which means give this thing a physics body matching the size of the box itself. Then, in our did move to view, we're gonna add physics body is equal to SK physics body, this time using the edge loop from initializer, and we'll say edge loop from our frame. Now this physics body actually comes from SK scene. It's a property of the main scene itself. We're giving a physics body on line 27 to every individual box, plus a physics body to our whole scene. So there's lots of physics bodies happening here. I press Command R again, and now hopefully things will look a lot better. So I can now tap, and a box falls to the ground and bounces around. Another one, that falls down, bounces it around. There we go. This is looking much, much, much better now. Fantastic. Look at that. Yeah. Physics rocks. <laughs> now, this really shows up the kind of power of Sprite Kit. It's just so fast and easy to make games. There's really nothing holding you back. But we're just getting warmed up.